Clap of praise. It's a little light in here. We've had some complaint about living in darkness, so we have come into the marvelous light. I can see you. You can see me. Uh, and I, we'll try this out. If it's too bright for you, then we'll make some adjustments next week. How's everybody feeling today? Great. Amen. Give God, give God, give God some praise. Change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere uh, this morning. Uh, this, this morning, we, we start this love series. And any of y'all familiar with uh, 1 Corinthians 13? Uh, it's, it's the love is patient. Love is kind. Anybody familiar with that? Love is, love is. And so this morning, we want to talk about love being patient. But it's something about that that seems so, so plain. Like love is, love is patient. God, if you give me that to, to preach, I don't know exactly if I can tell them just wait. Wait on the ones that you love. But God gave me some nuggets, and I can't wait to share them with you today. If you have your Bible, uh, open it up to 1 Samuel. Uh, this is an Old Testament. This is a, uh, a 1 Samuel 24, verse 1 through 7. 1 Samuel 24, verse 1 through 7. And, and this, will, this will lead us off into uh, the message this morning. How long do you wait for a loved one? Anybody ever asked you that? How long do I wait? For, for my loved one. How long do I really wait for justice? This is Black History Month. How long do we wait until we can have more uh, pieces of the pie? Do we, do we still believe that affirmative action has happened? Do we feel like we are progressing in life? How long do we wait for our kids to, to stop acting up in school? How long do we wait for our, our husband or our spouse that may be cheating on us? How long do we stay with them until we leave? God, how long do we wait? For someone to come out of depression how long do you wait for somebody to respond to your message how long do you wait for somebody to go through grief how long do you wait sometimes we feel like it's 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 I'm tired anybody tired of waiting I'm tired of waiting for my finances to change I'm tired of being uh, passed up with promotions I'm tired of of, of of being in this position I'm ready for my season how many people are ready for your season I'm ready for my season I'm ready for my wife to act right I'm right I'm ready for my husband to act right I'm ready for my job to act right I'm ready for my boss to line up I'm ready for my kids to grow up and start respecting me I'm ready for people to stop overlooking me and devaluing me I'm ready for revelation I'm ready for God to show me the promise of his, his goodness. I'm ready. How many of y'all are ready? ready? Yeah. But it's something in the waiting that we can't overstep. Because if we overstep the waiting, then we miss out. There's a story about, about David, and, and we'll read this. David, David was anointed. Saul anointed David. Saul anointed David. Saul was the king at the time. David was just a shepherd boy in the, in the fields. And, and, and Saul came looking for the next king, and he saw David, and he anointed his head with oil. Saul saw something in David, and David knew that he was going to be the next king. However, when, when David, so Saul went back to his kingdom, he sent for David, said, David, come back, live in my kingdom. Uh, and, and he was there. He asked his dad to stay there. He stayed there. But as Saul began to see David, he saw David increasing in wisdom. He saw David increasing in warrior-like attributes. He saw David growing up, and he got jealous of David to the point where he took 3,000 men and said, we're going to go kill David. Does that make, I anointed you, but now I want to kill. It's, it's, it's like when you get married and you love that person and then after the first three or four months, you will look over there and oh, when you wake up and you say, man, I would just rather just okay, we don't want to talk about that. I don't want to be real with me this morning. Okay, that, that's just me. That's just how I felt. Or when you have your kids and they hit that middle school and, 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 and age and they start talking back and they, they look at you crazy or they may swing at you and you be like, I would just Come on. Or you get that dream job and you love your boss and then your boss starts to do some shady stuff and you say, I would. I would. Because the, 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 when things change in the process of us moving in life. And so David, David is now has these 3,000 men after him to kill him. David is, is not scared. He has his boys with him. And so this is the scene. Sets the stage. 3,000 men are having. Let's, let's read the scripture. If we can stand and read the scripture. 
He says, after Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all of Israel and set out to look for who? And his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there and Saul went in to go to the restroom. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, David, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up. This is his prime opportunity to get your husband back for all of them times he came home late, left you with the kids, didn't help you out. You got prime opportunity to get him back. David creeps up behind Saul. Will he kill him? He says, and he cut off the corner of Saul's robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a, this man is trying to kill David and David doesn't even want to touch his garments. He says, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him for he is anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Father, I ask, Lord, that you breathe on this word today. Father, I pray that you give us patience in waiting. I pray that you give us a jewel in the midst of this sermon. Speak to the hearts of the people, Father. Allow your presence to be ever so present in this place, God. Give answers, Lord, where questions are. Father, I pray, Lord, that you extend us and elevate us today. Show us what it is, God. Give us a beautiful, beautiful beautiful time together in Jesus name we pray amen turn to somebody say the waiting game will change the game y'all go ahead and have a seat go ahead this is about to get good this is about to get good Samuel reads and writes about Saul trying to kill David Saul wants to kill who he anointed David but he wants to kill who David anybody ever had enemies after you anybody that just had people that were after you were doing well you were doing good and it seems like things just continue to to happen and go wrong it's 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 it's, it's. so we have these these conversations and uh, it's, it's a pastor's council we meet together on Mondays we meet one or two Mondays out of the month and we come together and we talk about how can we help change the community. Because that's, that's good, right? Pastors should get together, talk about how we can help the community. We get different politicians and different people that are running, uh, different people that have power and legislation to come in. And we talk about how we can make change. So y'all remember when they took prayer out of school, some parents, do y'all remember, by show of hands, do you remember when they took prayer out, they said you can't pray uh, anymore. We're not going to make you guys pray anymore in school. Y'all remember when they said you guys can't pray anymore in school. Do you remember, some of you uh, maybe have been born in the 60s, 50s, 40s, do you remember when they said that uh, African Americans or uh, Hispanics couldn't vote? Y'all remember when they couldn't vote? Y'all remember when they said you couldn't vote? Before... If we go back in American history, the only people that could vote were white males with land. So if you were a white male and you didn't have land, you couldn't vote. But if you were a white male and you owed land, you could have some say-so because you were invested in the land. You remember when that happened, that white men could only vote? You don't remember, but you may remember in history. So there was white men that, that could only vote, African Americans, Hispanics, nobody else could vote, and then there was a time when there was prayer in school, and then there was another time when they took prayer out of school, and I remember the Christians saying, well, they took prayer out of school, but we can still pray. Anybody ever heard that? We can, they took it out, but we can still pray. So we were having a meeting this week, and the Holy Spirit, uh, he, he flipped this thing on me. He flipped it on me and he started to bring back to my remembrance all of these times when we couldn't do stuff and this didn't happen and this couldn't happen and we couldn't go that way, we couldn't go this way. And then God said, they took prayer out of school, well why didn't the church put it back in? Have you ever thought about that? They had the same power to take it out that the churches have the same power to put it back in. 
the guy came in he said the problem with the church is we complain but we don't send stuff to legislation and so we're waiting for things to change and God is saying the church needs to change it there's a church on every corner you can drive down and see churches packed out on Sunday morning but when it comes down for legislation we have yet to do anything so God told me what you waiting on so, so he showed me this he says it's not that I'm trying to withhold stuff from you until you get a certain age he says you just have not realized that you have the power to do it now you have the power you have the power to put prayer back in the same way they took it out is the same way that you can put it back in the homosexuality uh, community is 1% of the population how much stuff have y'all heard about the homosexual movement? How much have you heard? 1% has moved so much because they're at every meeting, they're talking about their agenda, they're pushing it, they're putting their people in position, and they're moving in their agenda while it's a bunch of y'all. They say that we are Christian nation and confess Christianity, but we 50-60%. And we let the 1% beat 50. How did that happen? Where did the church go to sleep? Wake up. Because sometimes it's not, it's not the waiting that God is really trying to, to make us wait. He's saying, I need you to realize something while you wait. Say, realize it while you wait on it. So, so here we got this, we got this scene. We, 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 have, we have David. David is here. He can kill Saul if he wanted to he has delivered Saul into his hand he can kill Saul if he wants to but his conviction in knowing that he is going to be king because he was already anointed somebody say I'm already anointed you know that the enemy can't stop what God has for you you know how many of y'all know that by show of hands no man the Bible says this it says no weapon formed against me shall okay 3,000 men now, have y'all been around 3,000 people Three, I think at this school it's about 2,500 kids and if you see them in the hallway I mean the school is packed people are moving people are, are all 3,000 men are after you got you and your boys Saul is in there using the bathroom and he can't do anything and right then is the time for you to take them but David knew that there were some principles that he had to live by because the Bible says if you live by the sword you're gonna David didn't want to die by the sword so even though he had the opportunity he passed it up so 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 what does this look for you single folks you single folks you've been single for so long and you waiting on God to send somebody to the point where you've lowered and minimized your standards you used to say I was gonna wait until I was married now you just wait until he he can pick you up or take you out and so you said he, he presented you an opportunity but you ain't waiting on nobody you have abandoned your godly principles you have you have abandoned what God has told you to preserve and you have given it away you have cut the corner of Saul's robe God doesn't want you to cut corners the Bible says that he wants you to be complete and not lacking anything so some of y'all are, are, are putting the cart before the horse as the old people say some of y'all are, are shacking before you're marrying some of y'all are, are, are not going the, the full distance you have stopped short somewhere to try to get around it because you're tired of waiting Some, some of you, 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 you may have been married in a season where your wife or your husband wasn't giving you what you needed. I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand. Wasn't giving you the love that you needed. Wasn't giving you the support that you needed. And so you couldn't wait to go to work because you got your work husband at work. And at lunchtime, y'all are getting together in the, in the lounge and y'all are talking and you just love that because you're not willing to wait on the one that you committed your life to or you you've you found schemes to take advantage of the workplace and so now you you feel like they're not paying you enough at work so you're starting to slack off a little bit you used to get there early you used to be the first one there now you're the last to arrive you have cut corners 
God has already said, I'm going to elevate you. I'm going to put you in a position of power. But since it hasn't happened yet, you're tired of waiting. You start cutting corners. I was supposed to pay my taxes last year, but, but I found a way that I can cut corners. Your parents told you to do some stuff, but you found a way around it so you could cut corners. God in this message is saying that it's not about the corners that we cut, but it's about the position and preparation that happens during the waiting. God gave me this, and I want to give this to you now. So waiting, waiting, waiting. Love is patient. Say that when we say love is patient. Say it again. Say love is patient. Say love is patient. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. Right? Right? That's a fruit. That's a fruit. What happens when you pray for patience? Huh? Tell somebody that has prayed for patience what happens when you pray for patience. Tell the person next to you what happens. Turn and tell the other person what happens when you pray for patience. What happens? Some of y'all don't want to pray for patience because you know that's going to cause you to be what? More patient. God showed me this and I want you to write this down, tweet this out. I want you to shoot it out across the world. This is what God told me this week. God said to me, he says, patience is a fruit. It is the manifestation, the end goal of a thing. It is the manifestation or the end goal of a thing. So if I'm praying for more fruit, I'm asking for more of its kind. But God showed me, he says that it's not the fruit that we should be praying for, it's the root that we should be praying about. He says that the root is by faith and the trunk of the tree is wisdom. He says don't pray for patience, pray for wisdom. So the moment that you're waiting and while you're waiting, you should be asking God, give me wisdom on how to deal with this boss. Give me wisdom on how to deal with my husband. Give me wisdom on how to be single and safe. Give me wisdom on how to deal with these things. I'm not praying for patience anymore, I'm praying for wisdom. Them. David was wise, that's why he didn't cut the corners. So next time you're like, oh, I'm frustrated, I'm, I'm, I'm angry, I'm, I'm mad, start praying for what? Wisdom. So you don't believe me, okay, okay, well let's, let's go to James chapter 1. Let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. After you put pray for wisdom instead of patience, go ahead and highlight this and tweet this out. It says this, consider it pure, my brothers, and whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith, which is the root, the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking. It says, if any of you lacks what? You should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to who? Patience is the fruit, but faith is where it all starts. So now, this is what happens. Your situation looks like this. It's bleak. You've been pouring out more of your love. You've been struggling trying to keep things together. You've been making right decisions after right decisions. You've been doing what God has called you to do. You've quoted the scripture, don't grow weary in doing good before in due season you shall reap a harvest. You've talked about it. You continue to serve your husband dinner. You continue to be there for your wife. You listen to her. You continue to be on time and you're working with your co-workers that don't like you. You got 3,000 people after you and you getting tired and you tired of waiting. I'm tired of being a part of this. I don't want to be a part of this thing no more. I'm about to quit. I'm walking out on my kids. I'm walking away from my job. I'm walking out on my position. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. The Bible says pray for wisdom. Because as you pray for wisdom, God will start to show you how to manipulate this thing and work on this thing for him to give you completeness, not lacking anything. 
Many of us are stuck because we have not matured. You've gone from relationship to relationship to relationship and you still have not matured because the only way that you can mature is to stay working at something long enough until you see that fruit produced. It's like taking my seed from this soil to this soil to this soil to this soil to this soil and I'm wondering why I don't have any fruit because you haven't allowed the seed to grow long enough. You know about the bamboo, the bamboo grows down, it grows so deep into the ground and then overnight it shoots up seven or eight feet into the air. Faith is the substance of things that we, man I wish my wife would get this thing together. Substance, faith is the substance of things, God I wish my finances would get together. It's the things that we, God, I, I wish my car would just act right. I wish my AC unit would stop going out. God, I just wish I could get out of this apartment. God, I wish I could just get out of the hood. It's the substance of things. But the evidence is the fruit. If you don't stay long enough in the dirt, Hear me now, if you don't stay long enough in the dirt, you will never be able to shoot through to grow branches off of the trees. David was patient even with his adversary who was trying to kill him because he already knew in his mind that no weapon formed against him should. So I should be asking God to increase my faith and give me more wisdom so more faith and more wisdom equals more fruit more faith plus more wisdom equals more so I was talking to Tyreek back there Tyreek wave your hand look back there Tyreek Tyreek is, is one of the guys he helped me set up this morning he always helps me um, I said well, well Tyreek I said what's the one thing you don't mind me sharing our conversation do you I said, what's the one thing that if you had to pray for something, what would you pray? He said, I'll pray for my mom. And I said, what would you pray about your mom? He said, I'll pray that my mom can get a, another job, a better job. I said, well, the, the most wise person in the world was labeled as who? Solomon. When God asked him what he wanted, Solomon asked for wisdom. I said, so... Are you wanting your mom to get another job because you want her to have somewhere to work or you want your mom to have another job so she can have more money? He said more money. I said, so is money a seed? Is it the trunk or is it the fruit? He said, it's the fruit. I say, so do you want to pray for more fruit or do you want to pray for more trees? He said, I want to pray for more trees. I said, if that's what God is saying, I don't just want to pull you out of this with giving you more fruit. I want to give you a whole forest. So when the forest is growing, we can't grow weary in stopping the forest because the forest has to grow. It has to grow. The trees has to grow. It has to manifest itself because if I got a forest full of fruit, then guess what? Nothing can stop the expansion of God in my life. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. This is good word. God is giving me some, some good word. This is, this is premium stuff right here. So don't pray for patience. Pray for increased faith and more wisdom. Don't pray for handouts anymore. Don't pray for handouts anymore. We don't want our hands out. It says it's better to teach a man how to do what than to give him. Some of us just want the fish. God has said, I don't want you to be a beggar for the rest of your life. I don't want you to be begging for love. I don't want you to be begging for a position. I don't want you to be begging for, for, for things that you want. I don't want you to be a beggar. I want you to be a lender and not the borrower. I want you to be the hand and not the tail. So while you're waiting, I need to give you wisdom to show you how to grow. So when you say love is patience, what you mean is God's got some good stuff for me, but I have to ask for wisdom while I wait. Pray for wisdom, not patience. Pray for wisdom, not kindness. Pray for wisdom, not joy. Pray for wisdom, not peace. Pray for wisdom. All these things, pray for wisdom because God wants to show you how to work this thing out. 
I don't want you to just fix my truck. God, show me how to get a fleet of trucks. I don't want you just to fix my problems. I want you to show me how to counsel so I can help others fix their problems. I'm not just praying for the fruit anymore. I'm praying for the whole forest. That changes the way that I see life and that changes the way that I live my life because now I live by faith, praying for wisdom to have more fruit. David, 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 David is, is got Saul and, and Saul, he's got him by the corner. He doesn't want to cut the corner. He feels bad for even, you know what? This is like you in your single stages of life, even just bringing a person to your house. You say, I, 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 this is too close. I shouldn't have even brought you upstairs to my apartment. I, I, I forbid the day that you come into this house because I don't want to find myself cutting corners. So I ask you this question yourself, how many corners have you cut and how long have you been waiting because you've been cutting corners? You haven't seen the manifestation of, of what God has told you he was going to do for you because you keep trying to do it your own way. The Bible says lean not on your own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him. But stop cutting corners. Now this is this is what what else God God showed me. He says um, David was patient with Saul, right? David was patient with Saul. He knew that he was going to try to kill him. He knew that he had three thousand men after him. And this happened a few times. And David would go to Saul and say, "David, uh, Saul, look, I got the corner of your row. I could have killed you back there." And then Saul would say, "Man, you know what, David? I'm so sorry. I won't do that to you again. I love you. You're my son. Blah 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 blah." And next time, guess what? He was out there doing again, cutting corners. Now this is what is, what's interesting. I was with um, B. Michael McKay this weekend, and he did a um, a, a workshop for uh, choir members over at Mount Corinth, and he showed me the scripture, and and, and it, w it was a great scripture, and I want to share it with you. But he talked about David, uh, Saul. Saul had got so caught up into his own self. Saul had got caught up into his own self, right? He was so caught up in his own self. That's pride. When you're caught up into your own self, that's pride. He was caught up into his own self that the Bible says that God took his spirit from Saul and delivered unto him an evil spirit to torment him. Saul then said, go find me somebody that can play the harp to relieve me of this spirit so that the presence of God can come back on me. Who you think Saul went and got? David. David came in, played the harp, the spirit left, God's spirit came back on him, but David wants to kill the person that's really keeping him in connection with God. The lineage has to flow from Saul to David, but David, Saul doesn't want it to flow. He's so caught up on his kingdom that he doesn't want to share what God has already pushed through him. But it doesn't matter about that because God was also patient with Saul. David was patient with Saul. God was patient with Saul. Everybody is working out for the enemy's favor. But Saul was once anointed by God. So watch this, watch this, watch this. Saul was a powerful king, right? Powerful king, powerful, powerful, powerful king so powerful of a king but he got caught up in his own what self that the presence of God left and as it left it was on David David knew what it was to be like to be surrounded by love he was patient with Saul Saul didn't know how to be patient Saul got so caught up into himself guess how he died he fell on his own sword Saul wasn't patient with himself. Some of you guys are struggling with suicide because you haven't been patient with God and you haven't been patient with yourself. What if I told you that the time that you were molested when you were a kid, God is using that and he wants to manifest that to stop that happening from generations. What if I told you that you growing up in the projects eating ketchups and syrup sandwiches God was doing that so that he can make sure that the rest of your generations would eat steak and potatoes and llama beans and be green beans and greens and, and mashed potatoes what if I told you that 
your marriage the first six months was hell so that you could save marriages for I'm talking about forest type stuff that God is trying to do for you you may have to go through a little bit but the Bible says weeping may endure for the night but joy he says at nighttime your faith and the wisdom is growing and in the morning you get joy joy is just another fruit so when you go back and look at the passage and look at love is patient love is kind love is not self-seeking all of those are fruit of faith and wisdom that's why the Bible says this without faith say that when we say without it's impossible to please because if you have no faith then you have no roots and the only way that you make your decisions is based off the fruit. And if you're making decisions off fruit, what happens once the fruit is eaten? It's done. God is saying, I don't want you to be a one and done. I want you to be a celebrity. I want you to have a legacy. I want you to have an inheritance. I want this to be generational. I want this to last over a lifetime. I want this to be passed down to your kids. I want this thing to last beyond. That's why he says he'll give you more than you could think. Because you ask him for fruit. He said, no, nah, I don't work like that. So you wonder why God hasn't given you that car. God hadn't given you the house. God hadn't given you the husband. God hadn't given you the perfect mate. God hadn't given you the, the right position and the right place. He's got it for you, but you keep cutting corners. Put your seed in the ground. Water your seed. Let the sun shine on your seed. No matter if it's hot, if it's cold, if it's, if, it's, if it's freezing, if it feels like death, God is saying, I am maturing the seed in the soil. Because love is patient. The Bible says it like this. Isaiah 40. He says, they that wait on the Lord. Okay. Now, when we talk about patience, we're talking about waiting, right? He says, they that wait on the Lord. There are, four, there, there are a couple of things I want to I point out in this. Now, this is a different translation. But the scripture that I use says, but those who wait on the Lord will renew. We get tired because we keep cutting corners. God is saying if you stay to the plan, if you stay to the course, if you keep walking in, the, in my direction, if you allow me to order your steps, I will renew you on a daily basis when you get too tired, when you're too frustrated, when you want to quit. He says, they that wait on the Lord, that's a promise. I will renew, make you new. I will renew you. He says, I'll renew your strength. Then this, this is what else he says. He says, they will soar. So I, I, I got this image in my head, right? Got this image that everybody is running track. Everybody's down. Everybody's down. Heads down. Waiting for the gun to go off. The gun goes off, but God says, wait. Y'all remember, uh, some, I may be dating myself. Y'all remember Bugs Bunny? What was it? It was, it was Bug, Bugs Bunny um, uh, and, the and the turtle, right? Bugs Bunny and the turtle. And, and so they would say go. And guess who would take off? Bugs Bunny would be gone. And that, that turtle would just be moving slow. But that's not how this is like. That's cartoons. This is real life. Everybody's down. Somebody clap your hands and make that the, the sound to, to go. Do it live. Just do it all together. See if y'all can get on one accord. Just one. Just one clap. Just one clap. Boom. Go. He says, wait. People are running trying to do it with their own might. They're running as fast as they can. They, they, they ride a breath. They going around the curb. You still at the start line. You like, God, how come everybody's being successful? How come everybody's getting things before me? How come these people got more likes on Instagram? How come these people got more followers in life? How come they keep getting position after position? God is saying, just wait. You watching people, they got kids, they got families. They got grandkids at this point, and you still wait. God say, just wait. People still running, and they still doing all that they can, and you looking at, just wait. And then God says, I got an eagle that I'm about to send your way. He says, when, when the eagle 
eagle comes, hop on the eagle. Get on the eagle. You still waiting and people are still moving. They done lapped you four or five times. He said, I got an eagle for you. Just wait. The eagle comes and he says, they will mount up. They will mount up. They will soar. They will mount up on the wings of the eagle. He's saying that now when you get on this eagle, you fly. And it's not because of you working. It's not because of you was good enough. It's not because you were smart enough. It's because I told you to wait. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It says they shall mount up on wings like eagles and fly past all of those people that were working in their own name. They was doing it their way. I'm doing it God's way. He says they will run. They tired. They tired. They tired because they've been they've been they've been working 70 hours a week. They tired. They've been trying to feed their kids this way and that way, and they've been on food stamps and doing this and doing that. They tired. But he says, when you mount up on the wings of eagles, I will take you to a place where you won't grow tired, that you won't be depressed, that you won't be broke, that you won't be feeling like giving up, that you don't want to quit, that you don't want to walk out because you know that love is patient. And so I'm not tired of waiting. I know that there's wisdom in my waiting. If I had just sent people to stand up and say, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting because if I can wait, my eagle is coming. My eagle is coming. Look behind you. My eagle is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And I I believe it because my faith my faith my faith through wisdom will produce the fruit that God has given so I ask you this question I ask you this question some of you have have been living before marrying some of you have been spending before you get it. Some of you have been cheating before completing. Some of you have been sexting before wedding. Some of you have been doing things out of order. You've been running your own race and you're tired of waiting because you've been cutting corners. God is saying today that it's time for you to renew your minds. He's saying it's time for you to repent and to change the direction of everything that's going in your life. He's saying it's time for you to go straight away. It's time for you to know that God has a plan and a destination and I need you to walk in line with God. He says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. It's time for you to start walking in some footprints that have already been planned out for you. It's time for you to stop trying to make a noise out of no way. God says, I will make a way out of no way. That's not your job. That's his job. Until you can give it over to him by faith. Because the Bible says that by faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. I want some people to stand up today and say, I've got faith. I've got faith. I've got faith. I've got faith. Faith, I've got faith. I don't see you yet. You still one in the natural. You still sitting there self-conscious. He says, I have faith. That's a proclamation for you. Because if I know if I got the faith, then I'll get the fruit. If I got the faith, I'll get the fruit. I want all the fruit. I want all the trees because I've got faith the size of a mustard seed. He says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, he said, if you got it, we'll move it. But if you don't have it, you'll be stuck waiting. I want to talk to some people that's tired of waiting. That's tired of I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of waiting. God is saying, I'm not, I'm not making you wait. 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 I'm not making you wait for your position. You just have not asked for wisdom to open the door that I have right in front of you. You're one step away. You're one faith move away from God opening up the floodgates of heaven and pouring out a blessing that you can't even have room for to receive. Some of you want salvation, but the only way that you can get to salvation is to go through the root. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you can't get to salvation until you open up your mouth and say, I confess. We live in a generation where our children will talk to them and they may not speak back to you. 
Anybody ever witnessed that? You'll talk to a kid and they won't say anything. You'll be like, son, are you deaf? Are you mute? Can you talk? Is something wrong with you? And they may not say anything to you. It's because the devil wants to attack the tongue. Because if he can stop them from speaking, he can stop them from confessing that Jesus is Lord. All of this stuff is a spiritual matter. It's not just the times. It's not just things happening. Get the enemy trying to take faith away. But I declare today that we're going to elect some people that's going to put prayer back in school. I think that I believe that God is getting ready to allow the church to wake up because you've been relaxing too long. It's time for us to start pushing some things in the political realm so that we can manifest change in our world. How many of y'all believe that we can do it? How many of y'all believe that we can do it? How many of y'all believe that we can do it? But we have to move by faith. So some of you want salvation, but you don't want confession. But, but, but I know that today that that can be lifted. I'm not sure if all of you all are baptized. I'm not sure if all of you all are saved. Matter of fact, if you are saved, raise your hand. If you've been baptized, raise your hand. Put your hands down. I don't know if I saw everybody's hand raised. So I'm going to ask this question by faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please who? That's all we want to do. If you hadn't got there yet, we want to please God. We want to please it. That's why he says love is patient. So I don't have a problem with being patient with her or patient with her because I know in the patience process, God's going to give me wisdom how to deal with those type of attitudes, how to deal with those type of situations. And then the next time I see it, it won't be me waiting. I'll be acting and mounting up on wings as eagles and I'll be soaring through the air. And so you may be at a position right now in your life and you're saying, God, I need somebody I need some help because I'm tired. I'm tired of cutting corners. I'm tired of doing it my way. I want to submit my will unto you. I want to submit my will unto you. Today's the day to submit. Today's the day to submit your plans, your will unto God, and to watch him work miracles in your life. Eyes, eyes closed, eyes closed. If you're tired and you're ready, this word is spoken to you, it's fresh word, it's just dropped on great soil, and you're ready for it to, to change, and you've never confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, I want you to just raise your hand, you know, just raise it, just raise your hand, just raise your hand. And you can repeat after me, you can say, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's from the root to the fruit. It says you shall be, not you might be. You shall be, not you could be. You shall be saved. Give God a hand clap of praise for the people that made that decision. Give God a hand clap of praise. Give it up, give it up. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. Give them a faith field. Give them a forest size hand clap to know that people have recommitted their lives to Christ today because they are willing and ready for God's power. If you want to take next.